Shalom and praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Justus Kibel from JCC Gateway. I want to welcome you to our powerful Sunday service today. God has put it in, upon my heart to speak about honoring the anointed. I want you to join us and I want to promise you that God is going to bless you and do you good. Welcome and God bless you. establishing a foundation as a believer no we are establishing a foundation now allow me to tell you this and then I close the business of what I'm saying it was only for five minutes and then I'm going to preach and uh, together we are going to be blessed I want to say something um, right here um, which everybody needs to consider as you walk your life, um, if you understand this, it will put you in prayer. I want you to open your Bibles in the book of Isaiah, chapter 24. Isaiah 24. I think, uh, I think I'm a pastor. This is good. I'm doing all this just to love somebody who did not love church. <laughs> I'm just loving somebody who never loved the church. All right. Isaiah 24, 18. And it shall be, he that who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught in the snare. Underline the next statement. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth are shaken. Did you hear the story? You have nowhere to escape. Ukitoroka uoga, utaingia kwa shimo. Ukitoka kwa shimo, utaingia kwa mtego. Yet the Bible says, the heavens are open, but the foundations of the earth are shaken. Without proper foundations, it doesn't matter how open the heavens are. You will be under the mercy of the devil. Did I say it right? You will be under the mercy of the heaven. Read that scripture again. You flee from fear. You enter into a pit. You get out of a pit. You get into a snare. What does the Bible say next? Although the windows of heaven are open, yet the foundations of the earth. Is your neighbor saying amen? They are shaken. So I'm asking how is your foundation? Ah, wacha kwangalia chini. Musingi wako. Waimani. It was only food for thought. I know you are food for the stomach. You eat three times a day. And I know you hardly think. That is why when Sam speaks, the Bible says, Sela, try to think. So I want you to try to think today. Is it that the devil is too much? Or is it because the foundations are shaken? Um, I want us to get to our message for this day and my message for today is honoring the anointed a month ago i promised to speak about this honoring the anointed honoring the anointed now allow me to begin by saying this there are some subjects that are very difficult for a pastor to stand on the pulpit and to speak about. One of them is giving. The other one is blessing a pastor. People will not understand you if you stand to speak about such things. Unless you have special grace. And you have special knowledge. And you have special maturity. To be able to speak independent of people's thoughts and attitudes. The other thing which is difficult. Yet it is a command of the Bible. Is for a pastor to stand on the pulpit and to preach about honoring 
prophets because he happens to be one. But Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter number 5 and verse 17, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and doctrine. <laughs> Come on. Those who labor in word and doctrine. For the scripture says, Thou shalt not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. So let us appreciate the word of God that a prophet, an elder, he that labors in teaching, preaching the word, they are worthy of honor. The Bible says they are worthy of double. They are worthy of. Come on, talk to me. They are worthy of double honor. This is the instruction of the Bible. And then the Bible delves into how do you appreciate a prophet? The Bible says in the book of, do not ignore, neglect the Levite who stays in your, midst, in your midst. Now, one of the challenges is in many conventional churches is that a salary of a pastor is used as a weapon of punishment. A salary of a pastor, oh, kumbi nyini wapendekote. A salary of a pastor is used as a weapon of punishment. The local elders in many assemblies who are in charge of that will make sure the allowance does not come. They make sure it is not enough. So that the pastor becomes a beggar of the deacons, they manipulate him not to preach too seriously. They use it as a reason to transfer you from where you were supposed to be to a place that will be more remote and without benefit. Think about all that. But the Bible says, one who labors is worthy of their wages. So it is important for us to understand the things that God has put in place in matters relating to those that are anointed. Why am I sharing this with us? One, the Spirit of God instructed him. That's why I announced it here three, three, four weeks ago. I have lived as a pastor for more than 30 years. I've never preached on this. I've always told you that, by the way, I don't preach things because they are preached. I don't preach them because I hear them. Um, <laughs> the other day I was preaching about the fast fruit. And I told you all my life, I've never taught about the fast fruit. And they have important doctrines. Now, the Bible says in Acts chapter 17, verse 30 through 31. This is important. You know why we must learn this. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Look at this. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 17. Verse 30, the Bible says, and I love this. Truly, these times of ignorance, God overlooked. But now, he commands all men everywhere to repent. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. And he has given assurance of this by, to all by raising him from the dead. Why we need to learn some Bible truths is because when you are ignorant, God overlooks the things you do. Please listen to me. If you are ignorant in any area, God will overlook. He has no problem. You don't know. And that is why pastors must be very careful to be very detailed, teach your people to know the truth. Let them live knowing the truth. Let them walk in disobedience in rebellion when they know the truth. So the Bible says in days of ignorance, when you are ignorant, God will overlook your carelessness. But now that you come to the knowledge of truth, the Bible says God is commanding everybody to turn from their evil. And while you turn from your evil, the Bible says God has set a day of judgment and he has raised a judge. Even the son he ordained, whom he raised from the dead. Our judge will not be an ordinary man with glasses. 
our judge will be a man who paid the ultimate price for your faith. Who kwa koka tu? Yeshua alikufa ili upate uzima, upate nafasi ya kukubalika ukiwa mwenye dhambi mbele ya Mungu. That is what the Bible says while we were still sinners. You never did anything for Jesus to die for you. He paid a price valuing you when you had no value. While we were still sinners, Jesus Christ died for us, a righteous man for the unrighteous. That's why you need to think. Before you treat people badly because they don't measure to your expectations, think again. We measured nothing. And Jesus did not be, he died. When we were measured, hey, when we were measuring nothing, he died. As we are quick to condemn human beings, put them out. But Jesus valued us while we were still sinners. The Bible says he died for us. And so, God is calling us to knowledge so that we don't walk in ignorance and in destruction. So the Bible says they deserve double honor. In the book of Hebrews chapter number 13, Kuna watu wanasema pasta atuja zoea ukifundisha. <laughs> Hebrews 13 17 The Bible says Obey those who rule over you and be submissive for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account let them do so with joy and not with grief for that would be unprofitable. My goodness. I say that would be. Come on. That would be. Okay. Let's, let's begin in verse 7. Remember those who rule over you. Who have spoken the word of God to you. Whose faith follow. Considering the outcome of their conduct. Remember those who rule over you. What authority do they have? They have spoken the word of God to your lives. And the Bible says, if you consider them, verse 17, obey those who rule over you and be submissive. Don't just obey. You have a responsibility as a congregant. Where you sit under a pastor, you have two responsibilities. Number one, to submit. Number two, to obey. Najua usemi, man. Na nilikwambia saa nyingine nikuhubiri andika vitu ili unatika accordingly. Ile uwezo kutiki unaweka x. So are you obedient? How many people obey me in this church? No, I'm asking. How many people submit to the authority of the grace that I can? I'll tell you about who I am and why I am who I am. Come on. How many of you you can say my pastor? I somebody said my prophet, my prophet. How many you have a reason to say I, you know what Jesus said? My sheep know my voice. Another, they cannot follow. Now, you cannot be hearing the voice and going that direction. <laughs> and then you say, I have a pastor. You are a crook. If you hear the voice of a pastor, don't say I heard and I was blessed. The things that you do after hearing, they are the things that qualify. That's why I told you, discipleship, is a discipline of followership. If you are not following, you are not a disciple. What did Jesus say? Deny yourself. Then take your cross, not your handbag. Take your cross daily. Deny yourself daily. Then you follow Jesus after you have done what? Denied yourself. The thing that is killing many believers' lives, the idol of self. Wewe ni mungu, mbele ya mungu wako. Nirudie. Wewe ni Mungu mbele ya Mungu wako. Hakuna kitu Mungu anaweza kukwambia. Akikwambia ukesha wewe wewe kesha utaambia Mungu acha mchezo. Mimi nitoka mbaya. Ni unaenda lala. Kesha unaendanga kwa accident ama kama unaruka mwaka. Kama uruki mwaka hapana. Pastor asitusumbue na mambo ya kesha. And this is it. It is what you hear. What you obey qualifies your honor. And honor is very important. God says in Malachi, you ought to honor me. If I be your father, show me my honor. If I be your Lord, show me my honor. If I be your governor, show me my honor. It is a requirement to honor. 
You don't have two ways. Otherwise, you have every right. That is what the Bible says. Children, honor your parents. You don't need to demand honor from your children. They need to learn and know and choose whether to honor you as their father or their mother, irrespective. Now, let me ask you. Do you honor a parent because they are rich? Hey, talk to me. Do you know a parent because of how rich they are? Do the children or the poor despise their parents because they are poor? Ah, ah. They honor them on the dignity. He is my father. I told you one time I was staying in Nakuru. A pastor friend of mine called Mbugwa is late. That is the first man who gave me a pulpit and we differed on the principle. You should not have a Alisema kitu tu ya mtu mjinga na nikaondoka kimoja. Actually nilirudi kwa factory kufanya kazi. Na Mungu akanitoa kwa factory. Anirudisha <laughs> kwa madibao. Hiyo kitu ni smart sana. By the way nafaa kufuata pesa yangu kwa hiyo hiyo reserve ya kuweka pesa ile huku dai asset recovery nafaa nitafute. And uh, one time the brother of bishop died. And we went to the Makaburi in Nakuru to bury the brother. The brother was a very serious alcoholic. There was nobody to give a testimony for his brother. Nobody. Only one drunkard came. But the sons of the brother of Mbugwa, they came out. They said, this man we are burying today is our father. Come on. He is our father. Hakukuwa na mtu wa kumutambua. Hakukuwa na rafiki chakara amelewa. Lakini watoto walisema ni baba yetu. Come on, you are hearing me. So, I want you to interrogate your place. Church is not a club. You have all the choices. Ata ya uwe riku hapa. You have a choice to choose which church to go. By the way, those who are joining us here in Embakasa, I've seen so many people, new faces, old faces. The principle of this church, you are free to be a member. Upewe namba, usipewe, upewe card, usipewe. You have a freedom to be. And you have a choice. Sikuile utasikia, unafaa kuama. You have a choice to use two methods. Use the method you used to come. Si ulikuja tu, enda ivo. Free. Na hakuna pastor atawai kukulaani kwa hii madhibao. Pastor Joseph anajua. I learned this from Pastor Lai. Every church in Mombasa has more than 20% members from JCC. I learned this from Pastor Lai. Never cast anybody because they chose to be blessed from another house. Washirika wa JCC wa kwa hapa wangini. Mutu pale unasikia unabariki waenda. Na pia ukisikia we ni mungwana. Njo uombe maombi ya kuenda ama barua. Bother will give you. Hakimini Pastor Mzuri. Ukisikia tu nataka kuenda officially njo. Nitakupa barua. Na pia ukisikia kuenda hivyo quietly. Quietly. Na uta waila aniwa na mtu kama umeona mazuri. Na ukienda ukute ni kubaya. Omi is always best. Rudy pia tena pole pole. Atuta kuuliza uliku angawa. Come on, come on. Clap your hands. I'm a good pastor for you. Na sema pika makofi vizuri. You need to understand that. So that nobody intimidates you in church. You have a liberty to belong. This is your house of faith. You need to listen to me very carefully. If I'm not blessing you. Na ulisikia kuna muna Nigeria maali. Anakubamba. Shhh. I mean, I believe in the grace that I carry. This is me. Without the pride in honor to God, I believe in the grace that I carry. It will change your life. It will bless, come on. It will bless your life. Is Makena here? It's Mama. Now, this is a lady from Maua. I want you to hear this. I've said these things many times. This lady we met once in a revival meeting in Maua. I prayed for her that day and she got filled with the Holy Spirit. This is her testimony. She's here. Maybe she'll talk later. This last week she called me, Pastor. Uko wapi nasikia uko Nairobi hii. Mali niko shikui na shikuli kiro. Lakini mi nakumbuka shikui wa moja peke yaka. My life is forever different. I want to come and build my faith and my life. Wednesday Makena was here. Today, Makena is here. Can I tell you something? The husband goes to another church. Na limuambia pale unabarikiwa, enda kwa huyo pastor wako. Ako hapa kwa pastor wako. Makena, God bless you. Mpigia makofi. You are not hearing me. I told you about Sam. I was the pastor of Sam. 11 years ago in Mombasa. Am I talking to somebody? I have met with another brother there, Washianga. We were together with him in Grace Hour. 
kukutana tu mchana hivi by the way january tunaanza grace sawa washanga tulikutana grace sawa anasema huyu ni pastor wangu na alikuwa na kanisa yake grace sawa inakuanga ibada ya kila mtu i'm giving you early news ili ukisikia tuna ibada hapa mchana usishangae kanisa ni daily Bwana nyinyi mnaenda biashara saa kumi na moja mpaka saa moja na mlalamiki ukifanya ibada mbili kanisani una mtu watu wameenda in protest kula nyama na wanakaa kwa sasa biblia inasema patia kaisari kile chake na Mungu mpe kwanza napenda maweo maweo tukiongea na niambianga pasta tafadhali kumbuka niko na wajibu kwa kaisari na mwambia mwa timiza this is a very faithful man by the way ukisikia maweo ako promoted usifikiri ange ni ndumba Niko miti me. This my tunapita naga na mwambia usikuja niko kwa Kaisari. So I want you to be a faithful person wherever you are. Serve with the diligence where you are employed. Lakini siku ile nakutaka kama pastor. Ngoja utaniona. Unafaa ukwe na the same degree of loyalty to God, to the faith. And that is why God will never ask you many questions. Mungu afanyangi interview swali moja mara tatu. Petro unanipenda? Bwana nakupenda. Petro unanipenda? Bwana nak. Baka akakasirika. And that is the only question you need to ask. How much do you love God? Do you know what apostle Paul says? The love of Christ compels us. Hey, the love of Christ compels us. The day the love of Christ will fill your heart, there will be a compelling reason for you to pray. A compelling reason to fast without a church program a compelling reason to pray at midnight wacha hii morning glory ya saa 10 na nusu na unalala wacha na hiyo hiyo iko mbali saa 10 na nusu manamba wako barabarani watu wa viasi wako barabarani we mtu ya mbinguni uko kwa kitanda ati na unaenda mbinguni kwani unaenda na miguu ama unaenda na tuktuk be serious we are here to occupy until he comes what are you occupying the canal space we are here to occupy until Jesus comes. So the Bible says, if they do this, I love this scripture. If they do this, are you there? Come on, obey those who rule over you and be submissive, for they watch out for your souls. A pastor is a watchman for the souls of men. The Bible wonders, what shall it profit a man if they own the whole world and lose their own souls? So I watch more than you watch your money. I watch over your life. I watch over your welfare. I watch over, come on, I say, a man of God is a watchman over your souls. And the Bible says, they watch, listen to this, as those who must give account. I must give account to God. How serious as a pastor was I? How honest was I with the truth? How candid was I with my instruction? How clear did I make it to you? I have to give an account. Kama mimi ni pastor Rojo Rojo, viboko ni talimu ambaya sana. Bila inasema wale walijua kazi ya kufanya kwa buwana wao na wa kufanya. Watapigwa viboko vingi. Wale munaenda minguni na araka mkwe slow. Nasema, ukwapa we ni kiongozi, taarisha matako vizuri. Na hakuna kudhata mbinguni, mungu wezi mfanyia ukora. Unajua mwalimu na esafaa vinyasa mbili, na umuambie jikchokeshe, ukimalisa mimi naenda. Hakuna kitu utavalia mungu. I thought corporal punishment inaisha na 2010 constitution. Biblia inasema wajua wa kufanya, mambo ya sawa na wafanya. Mbinguni, mbele ya watoto wako, piga wakoti. Ria, na sidani viboko vya mungu vitakuwa vya raisi. Yaani unainuka watoto wanasema ni ndio huyu. Na sisi tulijua baba ni ndikon. Here na ni Mungu. Si malaika. God himself says, "Watanyoroshwa viboko." Ah, come on, you are not talking to me. Na si chache. So I want you to consider your life. I want you to consider the opportunity. Did you read the Bible in James? The Bible says not many of us should be teachers because our judgment is going to be harsh. And if you are a leader, you are a teacher. Kwani wale watu unaongoza unawaambia nini? What do they follow? They follow instructions. They follow what you tell them. And so the Bible says, if you are going to do this, we should do it. They watch over your souls. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable to you. Now everybody look at look up. 
makasiriko yoyote unakasirisha pasta haitawahi kukupatia faida nimesema enda kukula mitura kiamaiko pita mutindwa fanya na tuna ibada hapa mimi sifurahi wacha nikwambie ukweli mimi sifurahi una nyudi una nisinya mimi ni sweti na mna hii na kufundisha baadaye unanifanyia vinyu mimi nasikia vibaya mimi sijui kupretend unaweza marafiki wangu wako hapa mimi sipretend ninge nasemanga ukweli vile ulivyo ukinikosea na nakwambia ukinifanyia ujinga na kuambia wewe ni mjinga ile vitu unanifanyia sipendi simaanishi na kuchukia tukikutana next na kupatia hug because nilikwambia ukweli come on me i'm not liking the behavior of the church especially tabia yako wewe sipendi sasa wewe chungusha tabia yako wacha kuchukua kanisa jumla ni kama kanisa ina tabia mbaya ni wewe kwani jina yako imeandikwa na ya bibi yako kanisani mbinguni sina kuuliza mbinguni hakuna mr and mrs you are not written with your brothers ati mnaulizana na dada unaonaje tuende ibada eh yeah? si umwambie naenda akitaka kuenda mitura aenda kule mitura you ought to be serious get to know where you are going so the bible says a pastor should be a pastor with joy not with grief na kama ni grief wacha kutoka kwa mtaifa sio kwa mshirika yet believers are the most grievous mtu ule uliombea toba si nilikwambia mapasta kazi yao ni ngumu sana unaambiwa na huyu dada huyu ndugu alikusengenya akasema unakula sadaka hiyo ndio mnapenda kusema esifu unafaa ukule nini kwa nini usi mnakula pesa ya KPA na kuuliza wewe unalipangwa pesa ya wapi? Si unalipangwa pesa ya benki. Na sasa hii ya kanisa inakuumia nini? Sasa alikwambia huyu alikusengenya. Alafu unaita otako. Yule mtu alikusengenya anakuja, analeta kichwa. Utamwambia toka kwa laini. Hapana. <laughs> Unawekeleanga mikono kwa ile neema uliopewa. Unasema Bwana bariki huyu ndugu. Muinue akuwe muujisha. Let him be a wonder. Who is he? A gossiper. Yeye ndiyo ukudungianga. Lakini unambariki. That is what it means to be a pastor. Hey, come on, you are not hearing me. Now watch this. So they should do so with joy and not with grief. Why? When you grieve a pastor, you will never profit. Read my lips. You will, hey. I thought you are looking for profit. The Bible says God teaches us to profit. The agenda of God is that your life should be a profitable life. Can I get this thing a bit more serious? We read in Hosea chapter number 4. Let me read Hosea number chapter 4 and then I will finish in a short while. Na main scripture si jasoma. Hosea chapter number 4. Lakini niko karibu kumaliza na si jasoma main scripture. Hosea chapter number 4. This is what the Bible says. I was reminded of this. Why do people do bad and wrong things? Because of this. The Bible says now let no man contend or rebuke another for your people are like those who contend with a priest. Biblia inasema hakuna haja ya mahubiri makali na yenye kukemea na yenye kurekebisha kwa sababu kanisa ya leo ni kanisa ya watu wanapingana na pasta. They contest. You announce revivals from tomorrow. Three quarters of the church goes on their own business they are fighting with the pastor the pastor is not their leader the pastor is not their instructor so the bible says they fight with and so the bible says this as a consequences those who fight with the anointing they will stumble in the day the prophet will stumble with them at night and the bible says i told you this and i will destroy your mother faith is connected there is no casual life Don't be in the faith and think you are alone. You represent your people. Now, rub the prostitute told the, the spies, consider me, my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters. Musiache niokoke peke yangu. So if there is anything you know be beyond anybody in your family, you know it for the sake of the Oh, come on. You know it for the sake of the Bible says, if you become a contender with the anointed, number one, God begins to destroy your mother. Number two, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The church is being destroyed. Did we study about foundation? The heavens are open, but the foundations are shaken. When you get out of foundation, no matter how beautiful, no matter how nice, that building will crack. 
that building will have problems. So the Bible says the people of God, when you lack knowledge, you are a victim of destruction. And the Bible says because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being a priest for me. Now, there are those who lack knowledge. And they are destroyed irrespective. Then there are those who have rejected knowledge. No matter how you preach to them, they don't hear. And if they hear, they don't understand. No matter what you show them, even in scripture which they carry, they will see, but they will not see. They won't perceive. They don't understand. The Bible says, lest they understand with their hearts and their tongue. When things happen in your heart, you will never discuss life with anybody. Mungu akigusa moyo wako sasa hivi umpende. Hakuna mtu atakubiria kupenda Mungu. Moyo umeingiana na moyo wa Mungu. Mungu akikuweka kwa moyo, mshigo wa maombi, you will never struggle with anybody. So what does that mean? Something is wrong with your heart. What might be wrong? Uko na jiwe ya moyo ya jiwe. Moyo yako imezoea kugaidi. Ikatoka sasa ika sasa imekuwa ya mawe. Na ukiwa na moyo wa mawe ni basi. Wewe na Mungu mmetengana. Mungu ni Mungu tofauti. Sasa mpaka wewe ujitafutie toba na umwambie Mungu ondoa moyo ya mawe, weka moyo ya nyama, yani yenye uko na utu. Na imagine ni mtu mjeuri kwa pasta. Pasta ndiye anawekelea watoto wako mkono. <laughs> Anawaombea dedication ya miaka ile yote wataishi. Kakiwa hivi mikono kwako. Huyo pasta ndio unaonyesha huyo mtoto tunaweza darau kisurani. Si lazima tuende ibada amesema mnaweka miguu juu ya sofa set ile mlinunua na maombi mkunywe kaawa mgaidi pasta aki nyimbo na bidi <laughs> ah maombi ile ile let breakthrough umepata ka sofa set na kaawa sasa ndio unadanganya mke mketi hapa ibada inaendelea mungu yu mwema kaawa ni nzuri kaawa ni nzuri daddy I'm just wondering, where are we going? Now look at it. The Bible says they are destroyed. And you are rejected from, the Bible says we are royal priesthood. We are both the kings and the priests unto God. And because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. The moment you deliberately choose to forget what God has said, the law, the instruction. What is the instruction? Sikira siku na 2010 constitution sheria inasema sheria biblia inasemaje hiyo vitu yote umeamua mimi sikusikia wakisema kuna morning glory na sielewi sielewi eh endelea nimekuruhusu mimi hata sina vita kazi yangu ni kukupeleka kwa ukuta kabisa ni hakikisha umesikia na ni umesikia umesikia kabisa umelewa yangu ni hiyo nikifikisha hapo ile ingine sasa ni wewe you can choose now to be whatever you want to be. But I must be very straight. I cannot be fork tongue. And so the Bible says, your children will be rejected. Please mark those things about the family. I never knew this. I'll show you the scripture that I read to come to this. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. You shall be established. Believe in his prophets. And what will happen? Thou shalt prosper. So prosperity is not gotten from God. Hey, Ebu Amuka, prosperity is not gotten from God. Prosperity is gotten from a man of God. Establishment is by God. Hey, prosperity comes from your relationship with the anointed. Establishment comes from God. Ebu Jipugia Makofi, come on, my level your scripture. Let me simplify. Now then what is it? What is it? Psalms 105, verse 14 and 15. This is what I want you to know about the anointed. Psalms 105. Why does God demand that the anointed be protected and be honored? It says this. Psalms 105 verse 14. He permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes. He rebuked the kings for their sake. What did he say? Do not touch my anointed ones. And my prophets do no harm. Now this is God. God is talking about the children of Israel. When God wanted to protect the children of Israel. He lifted them. 
Listen to this. He promoted them to the position of servants and the prophets. The Bible says he rebuked the kings. What are we in gossip our mutani? He rebuked the kings. And they told the kings, do not touch my anointed. Do them no harm. That is how jealous God is about the people we anoint. Why does God do that? Nobody becomes a true pastor by getting a university degree. You become a pastor in the real sense by being called and gifted by God. It is the anointing, not the training. That makes you a man of God. What is God protecting? The anointing, not you. The giftings of God and his calling, they are irrevocable. They are without apology. You can't change. God cannot change what he has made me. You didn't hear what I said. And because of that, the anointing is the power of God. The Bible says, not many of you that are called were of any significant class in the society. Listen to that. Mubiri akwangi mubiri kwa sababu ni mzuri ama ni mrefu ama ni mnono eh eh. It is a choice of God. He chooses the weak to ashamed the strong. You are not hearing me. So anointing is not about anybody's personal attributes and the competence. It is the will and the wisdom of God. <laughs> My goodness, it is the will and the wisdom of God. And that is why God stands to defend the glory and the dignity of the anointing. Please. The glory and the dignity of the anointing. Why he defends the people he has lifted and raised. That is why he says I bless those who bless you. I curse those who curse you. I don't need to fight with anybody. Ulisa hapa kama kuna mtu tunapigana. Tupigania nini? Naesa kukuachia freedom. Naesa kukuachia freedom ya ujeuri. Maneno mbaya. Tabia mbaya. Mi sinaja. Kukuonya nda kuonya, kukuambia nda kuambia, kukuita nda kuketisha. Ikipita hapo, mina nawa mekono kama pilato, nasema uyu mutu wana makosa, fanyani vile munataka. You didn't hear me. The Bible says a man of God must not quarrel. He must be patient to teach people. Come on, lest they fall in the deception of the devil. If you see a quarrel, some pastor, check again. Something is wrong with them. Ukustia vile ni mesema. A man of God must not quarrel. Mutu yoyote mkorofi ana naema ya mungu. Tafuta uyo mutu ni wa background gani. A man of God will not. He has authority to rebuke. He has authority to teach. He has authority to correct. And all those things. So the Bible says, do them no wrong. Touch not the anointed. I want to read this scripture. It is a bit scary. Yet it is what made me share what I'm sharing. Can I read it now? Tunamalizia mali tungeanzia. Niliambia wanafunzi wa School of Ministry wale watu tuli tuambila kusoma homiletics. Tunashida because tunafanyanga introduction mwisho wa conclusion. Wale wamesoma homiletics wako hapa wengine na wanajua mambo mengi. Sisi tulijua tukitu moja. Now, I don't know what to, I didn't want to get to these details, but allow me just say this. Jeremiah chapter number 18. I want to read background information. Jeremiah is taught to go to the potter's house, and then he's taught when you go there, you'll hear my words. In verse 4, the Bible says, the vessel that was in the hands of the potter was destroyed. And then the potter made it again to be as good as it was supposed to be. Verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, House of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Says the Lord. Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in my hands. The instant I speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom, to pluck up, to pull down, to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have spoken turn from his evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. The instant I speak, the moment, the moment I speak concerning a kingdom, to build and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good which I said I would to benefit it. Now therefore, speak to the men of Judah, 
tell them, that says the Lord, I'm fashioning a disaster, devising a plan against you. Return now, everyone from his evil way. Make your ways and your doings good. Come on. Mungu anaongea na hawa watu. Hey, sikiza. Hii ni message. Na message ya hiko kanisani. Hello? Pasta. Ameenda kwa Potter's house. Akenda akakuta Potter. Akona, akona chungwa na tengenesa. In the process, it never came out. Ika tokea ikiwa hivi. Aka ifinya tena. Aka tengenesa kile chombo alipenda. Then now the word came. Come on. He told him I'll speak to you from the potter's house. Yaani hakuna kitu Mungu hajafanya kusaidia wa Kristo wa kwewa Kristo wakitaka. Kaambia sasa ambia wa watu kwani mimi sio hivyo mlivyo kwa mikono yangu. Mkibadili pole. Mkibadilika. Mkikubali kuwa wa pole nitawatengeneza hata kama mko wabaya si neno nitabadilisha tena nikusungushe ufanane. Hiyo inaweza saidia. Akawaambia sasa mimi nikisema kitu mara hiyo kibaya na watu washikie na wageuke nitaacha kitu kibaya mara hiyo if i speak also a bad a good thing and they change from doing good mara hiyo nitafanya kinyume na kile kilikuwa cha faida yao hiyo ni ngumu kuelewa we hiyo ni ngumu nauliza ni ngumu kuelewa so shida iko wapi shida iko hapa let me tell you what they say they are listening to Pastor Jeremiah. And they say, that is shopless. We will walk according to our own plans. Come on, underline this scripture. Wali muambia, kwenda huko. Tutaenda kulingana na mipango yetu. And we will everyone obey the dictates of his evil heart. Mulise jirani yako mpango ni haji. Umepanga haji. Ukwe unakuanga na mipango gani? Pastor mimi nimepanga na familia yangu kila juma pili. Kila juma pili basi taksisi atutanki mambo mengi. Tunaendaka kupumzika. Kwani mnachokanga juma pili peke yake? Na mbona mpumziki Wednesday ama Tuesday ama Thursday? Na mtaki priest. Na nauliza. The Bible says actually they say it all place useless. Uka wewe utubadilishe sisi. Si tuko sawa. We have our own plans. Ndio nakuuliza mpango wako ukoje? Eh? Rada ni aje. Simulate form. Mlisema form ya Nairobi sisi hatutaki kuangaishwa na kanisa. Tutataka raha za miji. Simulate hiyo ndio form. Watu wa Nairobi hawataki maombi, hawataki ibada ya midi service unless ni Rema Fest. Rema Fest wataenda mpaka saa nane usiku. Ibada ya saa moja usiku haya wa Nairobi hapana. Mioyo yao ni ya muji si ya Mungu. Uh -huh. I'm talking to you. Wewe una moyo wa muchi wa Nairobi. You don't have the heart of God. They said hopeless, useless. We are going to walk according to our plans. And each one of us, we have an evil dictate in our hearts. That is how we are going to live. Are you one of them in one mkono? Sakini we ni muongo. Si hapa si ni wiki ngapi? Ini ya ini ama ni ya tano. Tumetangaza mo ni glory umekuja ngapi? Ibada za Wednesday na mimi ama discipline pastor uliza mtu yote amekuja ibada hapa midweek ikianza 5:30 inaishanga saa ngapi 7:30 ask anybody me have kept the discipline you cannot accuse me before any devil but here you are very arrogant hakiwezi ni mjeuri kama unaweza ongelezwa na mtu kama mimi na ukose kuelewa na usikie na udharau haki wewe una rongumu Hiyo yako ni ya mawe. Leo nimekutangazia your status. Unajua ni vizuri pia uambiwe status yako ikoje. Ukienda pia kwa daktari anakuambia anga condition ndio hii. Condition yako iko wasi. Hii yako ni ngumu na kuambia ukweli. So they said hopeless. Actually they responded. Sema bure, kwendeni huko tuna mipango, tuna njia zetu. Na mimi najua watu mna mipango. Na njia zenu. Tunakutananga hapa saa moja. Oni ni saa moja. Hautaki kwenda five. Hakuna matatu pressure. Tunajifundisha. This man of God taught something very powerful this morning. Lakini wewe mbaka ukae. Ukule mayae. Ya kuchemusha na fry. Because mungu wa mekubaliki. Si tunakuja mbila kula. Because tunamuka saa kumi. Because mbaka pia tukuombe usikuja kanisani ukute kukoke otherwise. Atuwezi kukutegemea. Ayi wewe. 
Hatuwezi kutenga mpaka sisi tulale bila kuomba ndio tulale tukikesha tukeshe Friday tu tuhakikishe ibada ina maisha because kama ni wewe tutangoja ai kimeumana tayari ai uchangi chochote wewe ni dependent you are a consumer you produce nothing come on so the bible says they said this is useless we don't care now let me show you what caught my spirit when god spoke me god said Verse 15, because my people have forgotten me, they are burned incense to worthless idols, and they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk on in pathways and not on a highway. God has prepared a highway for the church. The church has refused to walk on a highway. The church is walking on pathways. What do I mean? panya root. One of his tu. Vitu ambavyo viko na convenience na comfort. In the highway of God, there is fellowship for everybody. I say there is fellowship. Come on. Now the Bible says, verse 17, I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Underline that. Because these people are rebellious. They don't honor their pastor. They don't honor their anointing. They don't honor the man of God. In the day of their calamity, listen to this. In the day of their calamity, I will show them my back and not my face. This is God. When it is time of need, you don't need a pastor. You need God. You came here in the name of God. You never came in my name. Then they say, come and let us devise plans. Please, I want you now to underline from verse 18. Hapa ndiyo kanisa hiko. Nataka, because walisema wako na plans. Sasa mpango ule thabiti. Wewe, nani punga mkono hivi? Punga mkono, pale nyuma punga mkono. Dadina kuona na tai. Hii ndiyo mpango sasa wapendwa. The Bible says, then they said, come, let us devise plans. Against Jeremiah. We are going to be very particular. Mutu ule anatusumbua ni Jeremiah. Anasema mungu atatubadilisha. Anasema mungu atabadilisha mipango. Instead, let us make a conspiracy. Let us make a plan against this anointed man. Why? Because the law will not perish from the priest. You can never take away the law. If there be a genuine pastor, a genuine pastor will demand requirements. He will demand standards. He will demand a way. So the law will never come out of a true prophet. An anointed man of God will give direction. He will speak about the way. He will speak about what needs to be done. The Bible says it shall not perish nor cancel from the wise. Nor the word from the prophet. He's of it too short. Mutu yoyote anayekima ata kushauri. Pastor yoyote anayekima ata kushauri. My Bible says, nor the word from the prophet. A prophet will never fail to speak about where we are going. Finally, come let us attack him with the tongue. And let us not give heed to any of his words. Hey. Walisema hii mpango yetu. When this man of God speaks, we are going to speak. Haya. Hai kwani wanafikiria tutashindia kase moja? Kwani sisi tumeandikwa na kanisa? Maombi maombi saa yote. Kwani sisi tunafanya kanisani? We are going to answer. We. Hey, come on. Look at me. Akina ni wacha kuangalia chini. We are devising plans. We are devising plans. We are devising. Let us attack him with a tongue. And let us not hear what he says. Come on. Let us attack him with a tongue. Tuseme kitu ya kupinga, ya kusimama, kinyume na kile kimesema. Na usio kusema tu peke yake. Ile alisema, atuta fuata. Nipungia mkono. Unashangaa nani? Punga mkono. Ata kupunga mkono, utapunga. Haka ita kwa mwisho. Leo mbaka kieleweke. Now the Bible says, give it to me, O Lord. Now, this is the reply of the man of God. You will never get the weight of this scripture the way you get it today. Read this. It will get your intestines out. Give heed to my voice. Listen to my voice of those who contend with me. Alisimama Jeremiah akasema imetosha. Mimi nimetesekea kuishia wa watu. Nimetesekea huu mwito. 
Apostle Paul anasema nilipigwa viboko 194 Have you ever read that? Five times I was beaten for 39 strokes. Huyo ni pastor. Angekuwa pastor, hakuna mtu angepiga Apostle Paul. Can you imagine? Kwa sababu yeye ni mhubiri, alipigwa viboko 40 mara tano kutoa moja. Are you there? 195 viboko mtu mzima sababu isa pastor. Akasema nililala njaa kwa sababu ya kuwa mhubiri. All of you know, ulisa huyu ndiye treasure wetu. Niko na mwaka karibu na nusu mimi sijabikwa mshahara na mtu. Wewe si ni kanisa ya kwanza. Na ikikuwa gospel watatoka hapa original members. Aki huyu pastor ameanza kunona. Na kona ngali mzuri. Kani nga, eh? Na siku ile nilikuwa nalala njaa. Hukujua, hukusema, hukulisa kama sina fisi ya watoto. Sasa kanisa ikikuwa wewe ndiye prefect number one, a monitoring demon. Na una monitor pesa peke yake. You don't monitor prayers. <laughs> pesa yenye utoi wewe ni mlafi. Unakula mpaka tai. Now took me. So the Bible says, let us attack him with the tongue. So he told God, listen to the voice of those who contend with me. Mimi nitaambia Mungu akusikize. Kwani siuongee? Tamwambia masikize sasa wameanza kuongea. Mungu sikia. Wanaongea wakiwa kwa bedroom. Sikia. Wanaongea wakiwa kwa nyama. Sikia Mungu ndio. Alimwambia hivyo. Listen to them. Shall evil be repaid for good? For they have dug a pit for my life. Remember, come on, underline this. Remember, God, I stood before you to speak good for them, to turn away your wrath from them. Jeremiah anauliza Mungu ni nini? Si mimi hawa watu ndio nimetoa pepo. Hawa watu mimi ndio nimeprofesaia. Hawa watu ndio niwahubiria watoke kwa depression. Hawa watu mimi ndio niwekelea mikono. How can they exchange evil for good? I dedicated their children. I married their sister. I buried their mother. How can they rise again to dig pits for me? That is what church members do to people that are anointed. What grace do you carry? What incites you to do such evil things? He said, God, now you can listen. Didn't I stand? You anointed me. Didn't I pray the whole night for them? Didn't I fast? Was I not abused? Was I not called a devil worshiper? Did they not say I am evil? Only because I stand in the public to preach to them. God, you know, now they are here. He told them, remember that I stood. Hata mimi ndio niliomba Mungu usiwakasirikie. Wakati walikuwa ni wajeuri, Mungu nilikuomba. Tuza watu wako tu watabadilika. Unajua hiyo ndio mambo naombanga. Msamee huyo dada Mungu. Muone huruma. Hata kama hakuja ibada, kumbuka Mungu. Nema zako ni za kila siku. Yaani ukiinuliwa. Now therefore, listen to this. This is the judgment. Sikutaka kusoma ila kini nitafanyaje. Siku moja nilisikia nganga akiombea maadui nikaona ni kama nganga ameomba vibaya watoto wao wakuwa yatima <laughs> mabwana zao wakufe watoto wawe chokora wasipate mtu wa kuwasaidia kesi yao ikumbukwe upya makosa ya nyanya yao iletwe kama la you know that is how the bible speaks unajua hiyo kitu upendi lakini wewe ni muovu aje kama hiyo maukweli ba okay listen to the judgment it is here therefore the leap of their children to the famine in your judgment ya wale munadharau anointing huyu ni prophet jeremiah deliver their children watoto wao wakutane na njaa na uwezi jua imaandiko itatimia lini wenda ukaishi tu vizuri unafikiria si kuenda mama kwani wangenifanya nini sawa ngojea miaka tano ifike utakuwa haupo wale watoto ulifikiria umerundikia mali watalala njaa ni nini imewapiga madharau ya pasta <laughs> come on i'm talking to you me i came to help Haki sina shida na mtu singetumwa kuhubiri sina haja The Bible says and they pour out their blood by the force of the sword wafanye wapate mapigo ya kumwaga damu let their wives become widows amesemaje wakufe bibi zao wabaki wajane haki mbibiria ni mbaya hivi ni nini walifanya walisema tuko na mpango kinyume na pasta atajua ajui Aye. Huyu ni Jeremiah akiomba. Uzuri mimi na kuombea baraka, lakini <laughs> neno inakutadharisha. And the bereaved of their children. Guy. Let their men be put to death. 
wanaume wao wakienda kwa shughuli yoyote ina hatari na wafe Industry mbatu zako zinatembea Mimi mliniambia ni mbili There are young men be slain by sword in the battle of their mass Let her cry be heard from their houses <laughs> When you bring a troop suddenly upon them for they have dug a pit to take me they have eaten snares for my feet yet lord you know all their counsel which is against me to slay me provide no atonement for their iniquity yani ukiombewa hivyo na mtu wa mungu mungu aseme kutoka leo mungu sio yuko samee dhambi ya huyo dada najua ujui and you decree a thing it shall be now this is the problem of a man of god he carries authority to curse Yet is ordained to bless not to kae. Ordination ya pastor ni baraka. Hana sababu ya kulaani mtu. Lakini siku ile moja utapatikana na hasira ya mtu wa Mungu. Amekosa amani. Then ya aseme kutaendaje? Mimi nakupatia ruhusa haki na kanisa imenyamaza. Leo kuna kupokea magari. Magari iko on the other side. Wale mlikuja kupokea magari tafadhali, mkuja Jumapili nyingine kutakuwa na baraka ya magari. So <laughs> So they dug a pit for me yet Lord you know all their counsel Hakuna kitu Mungu ajui ya vitu ile mbaya unafanya and I'm not the only pastor you spoke about pastors some of you you are in this church because you litoroka vita Na mimi nakupokea maybe utasomea hapa kutopiga vita Mimi nakusaidia na anointing ni mbaya wapendwa I was talking to some women nienda na mke wangu huko huko kunaitwaje Kiambu Road kwa Pastor Martin Murigi yule pastor anaombanga maombi fundi ya sadaka na nikaambia wa mama kuna mama mmoja alikufa bila rehema kwa Biblia na akwa na dhambi mbaya alidharau anointing bwana yake amepata ushindi ule uja uipatwa Israeli hai ndio hao wamekuja na shifa woye bwana ame dance mpaka nguo zimetoka mwai ku dance bwana yako akakudharau ama mke akaanza kushindwa ninyi uko unafanya kanisani sasa hiyo mnaruka hivyo ni nini hiyo sasa <laughs> Chungaka sana ukija na mke kama unajua haja kuoka vizuri kama ali tofauti mimi nimekupatia ruhusa at least ili uruke sasa huyu jamaa ameruka akaruka akapoteza nguo akifika kwa nyumba bibi amefura saizi kwenda huko shaitani unaenda kucheza na wasichana hata una adabu wewe kwa tai Daudi alimwambia sikia hivi Mungu akiniinua kunifanya mpaume kwa nafasi ya baba yako ulikuwa wapi na by the way hiyo kuinuliwa ndio ilimuoa. We, hiyo ku... <laughs> angeolewa ngona Daudi, hiyo kuinuliwa. Daudi aliambiwa ukiua Goliath, unaoa binti ya mfaume. Listen to this. You are just a miracle where you are. You misbehave against the glory of the miracle come on that you have received. Anointing ya Daudi ya Nabi. Sio ya mfaume na si ya husband. Ikalaani yule mama kwambia ma ofisi ni tofauti huyu ni manager bengi na ni mtoto wa mama yake na ni bwana ya Gladys kwa Gladys huyu si manager na kwa watoto wake si director maana uelewi kwa hivyo hakikisha ofisi yako unajua huyu mama hakutofautisha bwana yake na nabii wa Mungu kika mramba yeye ndiye mwanamke peke yake kwa biblia alikufa tasa tasa wote wa biblia wale wamerekodiwa wote maliza why There was no way the husband could take away the curse of the man of God. You did in Jada. Bwana yake hakuwa na authority because the grace of the prophet is higher than the grace of the husband. Now you did in here. Sasa angalia, hii ndio sababu ndugu wawili wa Musa walipo msengenya. Mungu alishuka mwenyewe. Hakutuma Yoda Dikon. Alikuja kumuuliza Aaron na Miriam. Na hawa ndio walipangusa huyu choa akiwa mtoto. Lakini anointing yamemuinua juu yao because anointing si wewe ni nguvu ya Mungu mlifikwa mnafanya nini nyinyi mnamjua Musa kama hiyo majini mtu umebeba hivi unaulishwa na Mungu unamjua huyu na ni ndugu yako mdogo ukiintroduce and this is my kid brother hapo hivyo ndio namuintroducing my kid brother hivyo ndio namu hivyo ndio namuintroducing wakaulishwa mnamjua do you know of all the men this is the most humble man i speak face to face na unajua ilikuwa shida ni nini alioa mwanamke mwa Afrika. Wachana na kusema wa Ethiopia mwa Afrika na yeye ni Muyahudi. By the way the gossip was true but the gossip was not correct. Hata gossip yako sina kwanga ni ya kweli. Vitu vingine unasema kinyume na pasta by the way ni kweli. 
lakini ni makosa kusema <laughs> ni makosa kusema aya he kwani nani alikunywa pombe noa ndiye alikunywa pombe nani alitoa nguo ama hakutoa noa nguo pombe <laughs> lakini ni mzazi shauri yako so here is this woman and she died under that curse today i came to help you if you become a man of knowledge if you become a woman of knowledge you will not be destroyed may you rise from today to become a blesser of the anointed wherever you meet with an anointed man of god a woman of god a prophet honor the prophet come on i say honor the prophet if you ever submit an any grace in any local church honor that grace become a knowledgeable believer i came to help you today your children will be blessed your parents will be blessed it is shall be well with you today i take away any guilt upon your life ile mambo yote uliongea kinyume na watu wa mungu ile tabia yote uliyofanya kinyume na watu wa mungu today i break that curse you are free from every evil i say you are free from every evil tabia yote umefanya ya ugaidi pasta amesema wana kwaya wanaimba saturday saa 8 umeenda kula nyama KMC nimekuondolea laana na dhambi but from today god requires you to change god requires you to turn god requires you to behave in a different way why the anointing is the blessing of god the bible says we have this treasure in other vessels that the glory and the excellence thereof is not of man it is of god i am not a pastor because i have degrees my degrees are not in pastoral work this is grace given by god and i'm here for your soul i'm here to bless i'm here to help you I'm here to lift you and I pray that it shall be well. I told you about the priestly blessing. How many remember the priestly blessing? How many remember the priestly blessing? Open it again. It wasn't said by any politician. Numbers, come on, fungua numbers. Fungua numbers. Numbers. Yeah. Kwani watu wale wa Bible study wako wapi? You are supposed to know the priestly blessing. You are supposed to know Psalms 23. Kimuyu is a pastor. This is the priestly blessing. Numbers chapter number 6. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying Verse 22. Speak to Aaron and his sons saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. God does not just bless you. If God will bless you. Here I say makani na politician. Mimi ndiye peke yake niko na mamlaka kwa hiyo nyumba kusema. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious. He will not only make his face but God will be gracious to you. to you the lord lift up his countenance upon you and they give you peace where ufai kukaa bila amani watu wale nyote hamna amani kuna kitu shetani amekupa look up watu wale wote hamna amani kuna kitu shetani amekupa and set out mind moyo wa wasiwasi worries fear anger disturbance unakumbuka biblia inasema a disturbing spirit was sent to Saul na sola litafuta deliverance wewe unakuanga na disturbing spirit na utafuti deliverance kwani uko mjeuri aje unateswa na roho na utaki freedom si utafute freedom so the bible says and give you peace so shall you put the name or my name on the children of israel and i will bless them mimi ndio niko na mamlaka ya kuweka jina la mungu juu ya maisha yako alafu nikiweka mungu akubariki we Come on. <laughs> Mimi naweka jina la Mungu juu yako. Then Mungu anakubariki we. Mimi naweka jina la Mungu juu yako. Then I'm... Come on, I'm introducing my CV. My job description. Mimi naweka jina la Mungu juu yako. Stand up on your feet. You bwana. 
ready to walk in knowledge if you are ready to walk in honor I want you to lift up your right hand as I read this scripture Hebrews 13 18 the Bible says pray for us for we are confident that we have a good conscience in all things desiring to live honorably please I want you to know why I'm going to pray pray for us for we are confident that we have a good conscience. I want you to clear your conscience today. That in all things you desire to live honorably. I want to pray. And this is the benediction before I pray. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead. That great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you complete in every good work to do his will. Make you complete. Lift up your right hand. Make you complete in every good work to do his will. Make you complete in every good work to do his will. Working in you what is well pleasing in his sight. Working in you what is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Father in the name of Jesus I have obeyed your word. I stand on this pulpit, mighty God, as a pastor who will give account over the souls of the men and women listening to me. Father, you called me. I left the things of this world, the things that were of a benefit to obey your call. Master, how I pray that in the foundation of this church, in the foundation of their spiritual life, no woman under my voice, no man under my voice will live in disgrace against a man of God. Will live in disgrace against a man of God. I clean every evil conscience. I clean every evil conscience. I put a desire in every one of us, mighty God, that from today, Master, we are going to live honorably. We are going to live honorably, Jehovah God. We remember our pastor, the chief shepherd, Jesus. He brought us an everlasting covenant. Lord, we submit to you now. With both our hands lifted to you. Make us complete in every good work to do your will. Make us complete, mighty God. To mekua watu wa mapengo. To mekua watu wa kupungua. To mekua watu wa madarao. God make us complete in every good work to do your will. Work in us, Lord. What is well pleasing in your sight? Even through Jesus Christ, forever and ever, Lord. 
Grant every desire. Those who desire to change. Those who desire to walk in your will and in your plans, mighty God. We put aside the traditions of men. Tabia zile tumezifundisha za wanadamu baba. Tunaziweka kando shiku ya leo. Tunabondeka mbele yako kama udongo baba. Ukatengeneshe kile ambacho unapendeshwa. Kile ya kukupendeshi baba bomoa. Bomoa utengeze kile kikupende zacho. Una uwesho baba. Una uwesho baba. Una uwesho baba. Jama zote tulizo fanya. Vituko vyote tulizo fanya. Kinyume na mwito na mwelekeo. Wanyumba ya imani. Baba tunatubu. Ukatushaidie. Ukatushame. Ukatutende mema. Na jina lako likabarikiwe. Baba sande unatupenda. Bariki nyumba zetu. Bariki watoto wetu. Baba bariki watoto wetu. Bariki wazazi wetu. Baba tuonyeshe uso. Usi tuonyeshe mugongo baba. Tuonyeshe uso wa baraka. Tuonyeshe uso wa kibali. Watoto wetu wasiseseke baada yetu. Wasitesheke kulala njaa. Pashitokee mtu anakufa premature death. Kwa sababu kwao alidharauliwa mchungaji. Baba tusamee na ututende mema. Kwa Yesu Kristo nimeomba. Pigia Yesu makofi mazuri. Pigia Yesu makofi mazuri. Yesu. Oh. Thank you sir. I'm sorry if today we are a few minutes late. Waimbaji asanteni. Bishop Kakala is a friend of mine. Bishop Kakala is a member with me in the JCC Apostolic Council. Their father was a pastor. Na kulikuja pastor kutoka Western Kenya, Durumaland. Na ule pastor akateswa na watu wa kijiji na akaongea vibaya na akaenda kwa machungu. Ilibaki kwa shida kwa ile jamii. Juzi nikaenda mazishi mpaka wa Kenya na Tanzania taita taveta. Wakiongea kwa mazishi wakasema alikuja pasta hapa kutoka Luya A different one. Na watu wakamzingizia wakasema mabaya. Na yule pasta aliacha laana. Siku ngojea niliambia watu simameni. Niko na mamlaka ya kuvunja laana na kutangaza baraka. Ikiwa mutatubu kama kijiji. Mungu anaenda kuwaletea mema. And it happened on the spot. Mungu sema amen. Baba yao mwenye alifariki ndiye alipokea huyo pasta. Tukimuzika nikawaambia hatuwezi kuzika mwenye baraka hii bila kuacha baraka kwa kijiji. So please I want to beg you today. Begin to consider your life. Consider your ways. Consider the gossips, consider the things and consider the attitudes you carry. And may God help you and do you good. Somebody say amen.